Hello! This tutorial continues the series called Sketching with Schillinger. These four episodes are the result of viewer requests for more details on getting from basic sketches with composition techniques to a finished composition. That explains the subject of this series. In part 1 you'll find the full composition. Part 2 discusses processes in the melody domain. In this video, part 3, we'll look at options for deriving harmony from an elementary melodic cell. There will be diatonic chord progressions and pitch class set options. The combination of melody and harmony is the subject of part 4. But now let's start our journey into the field of harmony. Let's introduce this series. In case you already watched part 1, the overview, you may want to skip this and the next section and instead fast forward or jump to section 3. Over the years I've uploaded many tutorials about techniques from the Schillinger system of musical composition. There you'll find fundamentals and numerous examples. However, viewers have been asking, please could you demonstrate the sketching process in more detail? Show me how you get from a basic sketch with a single or a combination of Schillinger techniques to the final version of a piece of music. Since I'm not a fan of doing live streams, my answer is this four part series built around an original orchestral composition where I'll demonstrate the sketching process. Parts 2 to 4 will focus on the details, specific aspects such as melody, rhythm, harmony and orchestration. The first episode, however, serves as an overview and may be used as a reference, with the full-length composition as reduced score and audio. As always, you'll see diagrams, staff notation and there will be numerous audio fragments. If you would like to support my tutorial production efforts, you may do so through a single PayPal donation or become a patron and get access to regular uploads with additional content. This overview section is an abbreviated version of the equivalent section 2 in part 1 in the series. It describes the context of this set of tutorials. I'm a regular user of the Schillinger system of musical composition, a system for writing music that is now almost a century old. It is available as a reprint two volume book set. In more than 1500 pages you'll find 12 books called The Theory of Rhythm, Scales, Melody, harmony, etc. I published and uploaded many practical tutorials on techniques from this system. I still find it's a great toolbox for writing functional music when you're not in a position to wait for inspiration and you have to meet strict deadlines. I think its greatest potential lies in the generalization approach where all options, permutations and combinations are investigated. In case you are new to the Schillinger system, watch these two videos about the definitions and terminology. There will be lots of references to specific YouTube tutorials in this video. Regularly, in response to these tutorials, there have been requests for a more detailed demonstration of the sketching process, as the online content frequently moves from the fundamentals to the final version of the examples, skipping a number of intermediate steps. And that's what I'll be doing here, with this series around a 4 minute and 116 bars long example orchestral composition, with a, B, C, D form. You'll see the application of many Schillinger system techniques, where in this episode the focus is on a specific domain, either melody, rhythm, harmony or orchestration. The starting point for the sketching process is this humble melodic cell, a set of three pitch units C, D and E flat. In section 3, in part 3 from the 4 part series on sketching with Schillinger, we'll focus on the harmony domain. And we'll start with diatonic options. In this subsection you'll see several cases of pedal point in the example composition. Remember that we started the journey from the elementary cell in the center of the techniques overview diagram. In case of the chords in thirds interpretation, the application of pedal point brings us to the lower blocks in the harmony corner. The melodic cell is the set of three pitch class units C, D, E flat, shown here in staff notation and as cyan colored dots on the piano keyboard diagram. You may consider these pitches as three consecutive degrees from a C minor scale. Alternatively, when we consider chords in thirds, 
these same pitch units may be assigned chordal functions root 1, 9 and 3 in an extended C minor chord, with 5 omitted. That basically is the diatonic approach to our elementary cell. Along the same lines, we may use the tonic degree, pitch class C, as pedal point. Since I am demonstrating the sketching process, you will see a multitude of ideas. These attempts may be rejected or accepted, based on either rational arguments or just a matter of musical taste. So here is the first approved sketch idea and incorporated in the A and C section of the example composition. The tonic pedal point is in the upper register, here as a sustained note for high strings and a modulating synthesizer. In the second half the tonic pedal point returns, in the same register and instrumentation. With a different interpretation, the three-part chord voicing may be considered triple pedal point, see section 3.2. <laughs> For the next pedal point instance, at the end of the B section, you may have to revisit part 2 in the series, where I explained how the combination of the melodic cell original form O0 and the transposed inversion I9, the orange colored dots in the keyboard diagram, yields a 6 pitch unit diatonic scale in G minor, which means that the high D in the reduced score is a dominant pedal point introducing the following harmony with G minor character. However, my example composition also contains a case of non-functional pedal point. In this fragment, in the first half of the C section, there is pitch E natural in the bass part within a G minor harmony context. This excerpt will be discussed in more detail in section 3.7. What I demonstrated here is the first harmony technique application, that is, various types of pedal point. We return to the diatonic aspects and the interpretation of the cell within extended chord structures in thirds, another process block in the harmony domain of the overview diagram. In this staff notation, the melodic cell pitch units are a subset of a six-part voicing of the C minor at nine chord structure. I've marked the chordal functions between root one and nine. When you read the melodic cell as a chord structure in root position, the D E flat C stacking is the second inversion closed position voicing, and I decided to use this option. For the application example, return to bars 81 to 95 with the high register tonic pedal point for strings and synthesizer discussed a minute ago. The second inversion position melodic cell is set as an inverted bell chord. The sustained chord may also be labeled as three part pedal point. <laughs> In root and closed position, you'll obtain a cluster chord voicing when using the three pitches simultaneously. I thought this highly dissonant sound in the diatonic C minor harmony context might come in handy at some point. And here it is, used twice as transition phrases in the B section. You'll hear an instrumental form with hammering staccato notes for mid register piano in bars 39 and 40. In the second transition, the cluster pattern returns at a higher octave, now set for staccato woodwinds and piano. This dissonance sounds still fairly mild. A setting for low brass definitely would have had a significantly different effect. We continue our diatonic discovery of the extended chords and thirds. You'll see the return of the cell as different chordal functions and will create chord changes with structures in thirds. The melodic cell may be considered a pitch subset in quite a few extended chord structures in thirds. 
I did a series of tutorials on these extended and dissonant chords in the Schillinger diatonic harmony system, discussing voicing options and dissonance handling. Here I've listed alternative interpretations of the pitch class units C, D, E flat as three chordal functions in extended chords. These six options are shown in staff notation, with an example root position voicing. This voicing takes care of vertical dissonance distribution, and my examples demonstrate the lowest tension level possible. Listen to these chords moving from a triad with added 9 through 7th and 9th chords and ending on an altered B dominant 13 chord. As a next step I created a diatonic chord progression from the set of six options. I used these four extended chords, each containing the melodic cell pitches as chordal functions, in succession. Below the staff you'll find the root degrees in C minor. We move from tonic to lowered sixth degree, and then via the subdominant land on the dominant degree G. This corresponds to root movement with positive diatonic root cycles R3, R3 and R7, giving this progression a strong cadential feeling. Here's another video tip, in case you want to learn about Schillinger root cycles. Listen to this chord progression. I decided to use this progression at the start of the closing D section. This section is discussed in detail in part 4, as a case of melodic figuration, but here are the opening measures. The piano staff shows the chord change from E flat major 9 to F minor 9, but the setting for strings in the grand staff above has the diatonic progression C minor to A flat major to F minor. The melody, a variation form of the melodic continuity antecedent phrase, was presented in part 2. This is the framework sketch, an intermediate product. Note the use of inversion positions and moving inner parts, an aspect intensified in the final version shown here in the upper grand staff. Also, the overall effect is one of opening contrary motion. In a simple and straightforward orchestration for string section, you see the reduced score result based on the sketch of the diatonic chord progression in C minor. When the woodwinds enter for the second statement, this implies different instrumental forms, and that's where I also start to deviate from the original sketch. What else can we do with the extended chords in thirds? Here are two further options, namely alternating chords and chromatic medians. These can be found in these two process blocks in the techniques overview diagram. Strictly speaking, chromatic medians are not part of the diatonic branch in the harmony domain. In the Schillinger system you would find these in the symmetric harmony system. This is an example of a set of alternating chords where the melodic cell pitches have different chordal functions. Alternating between A flat major 7 sharp 11 and inversion position E flat minor 6 with sharp 7 yields almost full overlap in the four part upper layer and stepwise motion in the bass. I could have used this option, but when completing the composition, found out that in the end I did not use it for no particular reason. The next extended chords in thirds option yields a pair of chromatic median structures. Here the combination of B and D dominant chords, 
again with the C, D and E flat pitches as subsets. These chord changes may be interpreted as Riemannian transformations, with chromatic medians being a non-diatonic second order transformation type. On my channel there is a set of 4 episodes on this subject. The voicing I used has nice features, stepwise motion in the upper layer, mostly chromatic, a sustained pitch D in the middle and the bass leap B to F sharp, which has a tonic dominant character. That was an opportunity I could not miss and I decided to use this pair of chords quite substantially in the example composition. Its first occurrence is as a transition phrase at the end of the opening section. The voicing for brass shows the alternating extended chords, the chromatic median pair. Also note the dynamics, ending on a fortissimo. See the setting of the alternating tonic dominant bass part for bass clarinet and tuba. And finally, from this harmony I derived a descending motif for bassoons, lead trombone, synthesizer and lower strings that supports the idea of opening contrary motion, thereby strengthening the climax effect. This is a case where the melodic element was not derived from the elementary cell. This chromatic median pair returns more extensively in the fast B section, where it is set as strata harmony, that is, as a combination of multipart layers with each having independent voice leading. More about that later. In each layer you'll also find different instrumental forms. I've used that terminology before in this series. Here's a reference to a video about the Schillinger theory of instrumental forms. What does that mean for this instance? The top layer is a four part setting for woodwinds and xylophone and they play ascending and accented eighth notes. The middle layer is set for brass that juxtapose step chords and forte piano crescendo sustained chords. The third element is a set of ascending sixteenth note patterns derived from the local harmony. As these patterns cross the other layers, this instrumental form is not strictly adhering to strata harmony principles and requires careful orchestration to be discernible as an independent element. Here's the rendering for three pianos. Now you'll hear the orchestral version, which because of the fast tempo is written here as a rhythmical augmentation with 8 note time unit. I've omitted the heavy percussion in this submix. You may have to inspect the score in order to identify the two extended dominant chords from the sketch. At the closing of this section, the pair of chromatic median structures returns. Again, this is a strata harmony setting, but this time you'll find the sustained chords in woodwinds. The 16th note ascending patterns have moved to percussion and strings. And now the third element is the motif for brass that was briefly mentioned at the end of part 2. By the way, since I've mentioned three elements a couple of times now, remember that this is a good rule of thumb in arranging and orchestration. Use up to three musical elements in parallel, since this is the maximum that the listener will be able to easily perceive and discern in general. Listen to this chromatic median setting. I mentioned strata harmony in the previous section. This Schillinger technique is useful for creating multiple layers with either melody or harmony. It may also be considered part of the orchestration domain. Essentially, it is about a setting with multiple simultaneous multipart layers, with either melody or harmony. Such settings usually yield high part density. With this technique one obtains independent voice leading and instrumental forms in each layer, when certain parts are doubled between layers. I did a series of video tutorials on the subject of strata harmony. The overview diagram is taken from one of these videos and illustrates various options and processes, such as caudal function and dissonance distribution, doubling and coupling.
There are several occurrences of strata harmony in the example composition, and we now look at the two-layer technique with chord structures in parallel perfect fifths. This yields an atonal setting, a different branch in the harmony domain. More specifically, we are talking about strata harmony with two three-part layers. Each layer has a lead part, with two couplings at the perfect fifth interval. This yields three-part exact parallel chord progressions. On top of that, the technique may be enriched with contrary motion between the outer parts and counterpoint between the two layers. The template for this technique is the second movement from the Piano Concerto No. 2 by Béla Bartok. I did a dedicated video on this technique a while ago. Let me now illustrate the sketching process. It started with the three pitch classes from the elementary cell. I used the melodic form MF2, meaning the ordered pitch series C, E flat, D. And my first experiment was a parallel chord harmonization with SUS4 and SUS2 chord structures. Then I added a lower layer with contrary motion bass part and an exact parallel perfect fifth coupling. I decided not to use this version, but instead experiment further, which then brought back my old friend and favorite Bartok with his double parallel fifth interval coupling, shown on the left for a single layer. And then I looked for usable two-layer chord combination options with contrary motion. Listen to these four options and note the proximity of these solutions to the original C minor character or instead the chord tension level in an atonal interpretation and analysis. These combined two-layer chord structure options were then applied to the antecedent phrase from the melodic continuity derived in section 3.2 from part 2. You will find the melody in the upper layer lead part, written in rhythmical augmentation with quarter note time unit. The second phrase, bars 5 to 9, used the transposed inversion melodic form I9. The audio rendering of this longer phrase is for brass section. The result sounds like a Hindemith fanfare. This could have been used in the composition, although I would have edited the second half to create a return to a more obvious C minor tonality, but in the end I simply dropped this idea. However, the two layer chords in parallel perfect fifths with contrary motion was used in the introduction. This strata harmony phrase is set for woodwind section and synthesizer pad with celesta and harp doubling. The lower layer uses occasional bass part octave transposition. The result creates the impression of a half cadence closing. The same approach but now with added counterpoint between the two layers can be found earlier in the A section. The instrumentation, with strings playing tremolo and soft dynamics, is an obvious reference to the Bela Bartok original, with a more than sufficient suspense character. And this three-layer strata harmony with chromatic medians phrase in the middle of the busier and more aggressive B section has been discussed earlier in this video. The instrumentation, voicing and register, and instrumental forms for woodwinds and brass adhere to the strict strata harmony technique rules. The third musical element, the 16th note runs, crosses the other layers, as I mentioned in section 3.4. Listen to the three piano rendering and concentrate on the separate elements. 
that I panned left, centre, right in the stereo field. The Strata Harmony technique with chords in fifths already yields atonal music, but now we'll take a look at the pitch class set approach. Another block in the atonal branch in the harmony domain. The three pitch melodic cell is the pitch class set 3 2, in inversion form I3, shown as cyan colored dots in the pitch disc and keyboard diagrams. I uploaded a fair amount of tutorials on composing with pitch class sets and how to control the dissonance and the chord tension level. Let's briefly repeat the combination that I already used in part 2, section 3.5, for deriving melody variations and motifs. There I used pitches F sharp G A, which is the set form O6. The combination yields the following 6 pitch unit scale. That scale contains two triads, C minor and D major the subdominant and fifth degree triads in the key of G minor. What I tried then was to use this pair as alternating chords behind the melodic continuity in C minor, with the triplet rhythm from part 2, section 3.3. This half-baked diatonic attempt I did not consider suitable for fitting into the overall harmony context of the example composition, so I rejected the idea. However, the next step was to investigate the chord voicing options when stacking the C minor D major triad pair. In staff notation you see the six part cluster voicing, two half closed mixed type voicings in strata harmony setting and the bichord option on the right. I particularly liked the two last options, but I decided not to use these options extensively and therefore rejected the two first voicings. Remember how I presented the G minor melodic form interpretation of this combination in part 2, section 3.5. This same pitch collection may be used to create two part harmony with G minor diatonic character. That is shown in the upper staff. The lower staff adds two elements. A non-diatonic, let's call it remote, pedal point pitch E natural in the bass, plus a chromatically descending middle part. I could not miss this opportunity and used it as a transition phrase in bars 75 to 80, the slow tempo section C of the example composition. The harmony is played by clarinet and celesta. In the second statement there is the E natural pedal point for bass clarinet, harp and pizzicato lower strings, plus the chromatically descending middle part for solo viola and synthesizer. Another option I investigated was inspecting the interval class vector for pitch class set 3, 2. This 6 element vector has the values 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, meaning that in this set there is a single semitone interval, a whole tone interval and one minor third interval. So the idea is to add a new interval class to this pitch class set. And on the left, in the grand staff, you see the options for a fourth pitch class that adds the major third, that is, four semitones interval to the set. For example, the B flat is the major third below pitch class D, the G flat the major third above. The four pitches shown have been distributed either below or above the original set, here voiced as a close position cluster that yields minimum dissonance and tension level increase. I repeated the exercise by adding the perfect fourth, 
that is a 5 semitones interval. And from the options I created a motif. Check the intervals yourself. I decided not to use this second option. I continued by not adding a new interval, but by doubling the occurrences of the 2 semitones interval, that is, the major second or, as in version, the minor seventh. Again, there is a motif based on this idea. This has blue note characteristics, and I planned to incorporate this motif in the composition. Returning to the major third edition, I came up with the following motif. Note that this process implies I am creating both melodic and harmony content at the same time. This was a suitable candidate for application. Here's another idea based on the addition of the four semitones interval, either below or above the original pitch classes. These ideas, pitch class set forms I11 and I7, were next used in sketches for the B section, which has development character with the ostinato riff based on the melodic continuity in mid register as the constant factor. The new pitches are used as a counter motif above and below the ostinato riff, occasionally with exact parallel coupling and as rhythmic augmentation version with the quarter note time unit. I did reject this idea and continued with another development phrase sketch, now setting the new pitches as arpeggio motif, with imitation between low and upper register. The second half uses the same pitches, now as simultaneous stabs in additional layers in strata harmony. This turned out another sketch that did not inspire me. So in the next attempt, the sets I11 and I7 are used as imitation descending patterns. First above the original pitches, later doubled at 2 octaves below for a denser texture. This was yet another idea that went into the bin. Normally you would not see these many failed attempts in my video tutorials, but when you ask for a more detailed coverage of the sketching process, then, in all honesty, this is what happens when I create music or examples for the tutorials. So be prepared for another failure. The same idea, two descending exact parallel sets in strato imitation, moving into the lower register near the end, thereby increasing the harmony tension level. Yet there were usable elements in these pitch class set sketches with the G minor quasi tonal character and the added major third intervals. So I tried my hand at a longer development section sketch, incorporating the approved ideas as counter motifs over the continuous ostinato riff. Each phrase is juxtaposed with a transition where you'll hear the original set as pounding staccato notes in cluster voicing. The development section ends with the chromatic median pair we saw earlier.
Let's see what became of all this in the final version of the B section. As I said in part 1, writing music may become an iterative process, with collage, montage elements and several editing and revision loops. The overall character of this development, through careful and balanced orchestration plus appropriate dynamics, must achieve the build up to a climax. Listen to the first phrase of the development, that is bars 26 to 40. The added major third intervals are used as countermotif over the ostinato playing strings. There is quasi counterpoint, turning into stretcher imitation and rhythmic value diminution as we reach the first climax. You are hearing two essential elements in this faster tempo audio rendering. It is not the full orchestral mix. And now the second subsection, until the arrival at the chromatic median extended chords. It is the interpretation of the combination of two pitch class set forms as G minor scale. The piano plays the melodic continuity riff pattern, the woodwinds the G minor counter motifs. Then everything is transposed up by a minor third into E flat minor, creating fresh interest and functioning as a surprise move away from the C minor key implied by the set original form. So now we've seen the first three sections in detail, discussing relevant melodic and harmony aspects. This is my best effort to illustrate the process of sketching music with techniques from the Schillinger system of musical composition. Most ideas are based on a simple musical element, the set of three pitch classes that may be used for deriving melodic continuity or creating harmony with either tonal or atonal character. The subject has been split into four episodes, with part 1 serving as the reference, since it has the reduced score and audio of the full example composition. What's left is the discussion of the closing section in part 4. Especially in this part 3, with its many sketches and rejected ideas you should be able to get a feel for how I apply the Schillinger system techniques for composition. The overview diagram of techniques must help to guide you through the various process options and intermediate steps. Along the way I've been referring to specific tutorials on this channel. That will give you tips for where to look further. For my patrons there's a companion document and additional content. Hopefully you'll find this demonstration of the sketching process most useful. If you enjoyed watching this tutorial please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. One-time PayPal donations and new patrons that support my production of video tutorials are most welcome. You'll find the links in the description below. Visit the website for more content or for purchasing ebooks on musical analysis, arranging for orchestra and Schillinger rhythm. See you in the next episode of this series on sketching with Schillinger and thanks for watching.